I remember something very vividly. I'm going back to my college days. Anybody ever took this, 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 this devil of a course called organic chemistry? <laughs> Ooh, you can't see it, but I'm like crying in the inside thinking about <laughs> organic chemistry. So I go, I'm, I'm, I'm in school, right? I'm at Princeton on the East Coast. And uh, you guys might not know this, but uh, African families, if you're not uh, lining up to be a doctor or an engineer, you're, you're disappearing, right? You're just, not, you're just not doing anything. So I was online to being a doctor, right? And I ran into this course called Organic Chemistry. Long story short, we took one test at the end of the semester, and, uh, <laughs> and um, I get the score back, and it looks like I fell asleep in the middle of the test, right? <laughs> Like, to the point where, like, the, the, the professor came to me and was like, I just wanted to make sure, did you know there was a second half to the entire time? I was like, I, yeah, I tried my best. I was really in there. <laughs> right? So, so <laughs> it's, like, funny now, but at the point, it was like, ah, right? Um, so organic chemistry did that to me, right? And I failed organic chemistry. What happened for me is I literally had to relook at what I was studying. Long story short, I switched my major to this thing called sociology. Everybody say sociology. <laughs> hey, <laughs> got some guys in there, right? But look, look. Most people would think sociology like, oh, you took the easy way out, right? But the honest truth was, I enjoyed studying relationships of people. In sociology, I meet a professor named Professor Zelizer. In her class, I come across an individual by the name of Mark Granovetter, who did a study at Stanford University about the strength of weak ties. It was amazing to me because he was talking about networking, the process of cultivating relationships for our personal or professional development. And then I thought to, I started to put organic in information myself. It made me start thinking. I said, ooh, networking. Hmm. New encounters that widen our real knowledge. Networking. I said, hmm. Networking, and this is like the child version, is never ever talk without offering real kindness. Hmm. So I put this thing together and I was like, this stuff is really important. They don't teach this stuff, right? And it did something to me. Remember, I was an org organic chemistry guy. I thought I was going to be on that road. I switched roads. Follow me here. Now I'm doing sociology. And as I'm pouring into this idea of networking, I start to realize that there are young people who don't understand this concept as good as they should. Next thing happens. Fast forward, I end up going and working in administration at Princeton University on my, on my off time. So nine to five, so five to nine, I develop a program called Profound Ivy where we talk about networking, helping young people make their transition to the real world. We go into it for three years, three years, all in it, all in it, and I love it. I get to speak like this, but instead of 700, it's like 30 people, but we're in it, right? And I'm following my passion. Everybody repeat after me, follow your passion. Everybody say it like you're passionate, follow your passion, right? And I'm following my passion, I'm in it. I'm not thinking about anything else. Three years pass by, and I'm doing it with one of my best friends, and we're rocking, right? We're like, this information is great. Cats are coming up to me and saying, yo, I landed the dream job of my life because of the networking tree and the principles that you've taught. I'm like, oh my God, we have, some, we have something here. Two years pass by, and I say, you know what? I'm going to write a book about it, not because I think I'm a great writer, but because I think this information needs to be heard. How to Network in College comes out in, in the 2016, December 2016, right? How to Network in College, helping college students successfully navigate through their undergraduate and graduate years. I become a best-selling author. I don't say this to impress you. I'm trying to impress something upon you guys. My adversity, if I didn't absolutely bomb that organic chemistry test, like, like, hear me, because some of you right now are in situations where you're bombing something. Something is hitting you in the head right now. You're absolutely failing. You're trying to figure out what's going on. But you're being redirected. You're being, you're being repositioned for your passion, and you have no idea. I'm talking about the power of perspective. Everybody repeat after me. The power of perspective. Understand that when adversity hits you, oftentimes it's trying to teach you, but your perspective has to be great on it. If I were to say, oh my God, I got killed by organic chemistry, I'm an absolute failure, I wouldn't be standing before you today. Hear me. Hear me. 
I want to sit on this because I'm not talking to everybody, but I'm talking to somebody. Like you're in something right now and something is hitting you in the head and you're like, man, life is hard. Like I can't get everything together. Like I don't know what's going on in my life. I'm trying to put two pieces together. I just want to look like everyone else. I want to look like everyone else. Everyone else is going like this, zoom, zoom, zoom. I got friends who are passing me by, but for whatever reason, I'm sitting here and I'm sitting in failure. And I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you, not all y'all, you. Your failure is your teacher. Your failure is your teacher. If you look at it with the right perspective and the right eyes, I promise you, I promise you, as real as I'm standing on this stage today, I promise you that oftentimes life puts us in a position so that we can absolutely be hit in the head so that we can redirect ourselves and know which way we're supposed to go. 